Hi folks, uh, I hope you're all okay. It's Monday morning, five to nine. I house myself. And I made myself a cup of tea. I've got yesterday's video uploading, or uploaded, because I didn't get back on the computer yesterday, because people were on it, how rude. Um, so yes, I've done that, made a tea. I'm gonna sit and crochet for a little bit, because um, Paul emailed me this morning Someone he works with, uh, his wife is a teacher and they have a case of COVID at their school. So she's got to self-isolate, which means her husband's got to self-isolate. And then um, another lady in the office, her son's school has been on the news because there's a case there. So they don't actually know if she's got in today or not. Um, so yeah, it's... Um, a couple of schools that went back like a week or so before ours so Paul was like oh well you know how long before our schools get them so I said right I'm gonna go and crochet before work then because I'm gonna make the most of people being at school and uh, you know do it now before they're all at home again so we'll see fingers crossed you just never know do you so I thought I'd show you this morning the masks I bought because I'm very grown up and bought myself Nightmare Before Christmas masks. I did buy the kids Minecraft masks, which Tobin has still got his. Jack's lost his in his bedroom. Can't find it. I can't find it. If I can't find it, it's definitely lost. Them lot can't find it. It's probably stoning him in the face, but God, I don't know what he's done with it. I dread to think what he's done with it. So he's on a disposable one. You know, the, they've got a nice pinchable nose bits but they're adult ones not kids ones like I bought them I bought them special things they liked lost it Tobin did lose this for a bit but it was that was it was lost because I hadn't looked for it because it was literally on top of his cupboard in his room anyway so this is the first one I bought it's so cute I've had to I found with every mask we've bought bar Jack's kids one which is lost I've had to do some faffing to get it to fit right so this is the first one, and then I bought this and the two Minecraft masks for the boy, uh, for the boys and myself from the same seller on Etsy. And then she promptly didn't have any more masks because I was going to plug her, you know, send people her way, and she didn't have any. So I bought this one, but if I have it just on the ears, it's loose. So I made myself a ear thingy. Lots of faffing to figure out how to get it the right length. I thought, well, I won't need a really long one. It turns out it's fairly long. So it's just a chain of, I don't know how many, 20 or something. And then just a couple of rounds of, or a, yeah, I think it's a couple of rounds of single crochet and adding in increases at the, you know, when you crochet both sides of the chain. So that was pretty simple. Tobin has got one to go with his Minecraft mask. And then, um, and these have got pockets for you to put uh, filters and stuff in but these both washed yesterday so I haven't got anything back in them yet and then I went for a different style um, I went for this one which it wasn't it's not the fabric I ordered because it was a different nightmare before Christmas fabric but it's cool look I've got the mare on it and zero is somewhere where's zero yeah I've got zero down there look there's zero and of course my lovely Jack now this one, I had to cut the elastic off because it was so tight, it was unbelievable. I was like, who is this for? The elastic literally was inside there and then laid flat along there. It was, and it was so tight, there was no give at all. I was like, this is not, it, my ears were like being wrenched off my face. So I just crocheted a chain in uh, some cotton yarn and I have to do a bit of faffing to get it on. I have to pull my ears back up. But that's quite cool if it's quite snug. Um, but yeah, I like this one. I wear this one more because I don't have to do the uh, crochet thing at the back. Um, this is so hot though. This has got pockets in to put a um, filter as well. But this one is so much hotter than that one. Uh, I don't know, thicker fabric or the style of it, the way it, it goes on rather than, you know, it's an, uh, I don't know, it's not an across, 
This is just a straight across with the folds here. Um, but yeah, they're both both nice. I can't remember how much. I think I paid about five pounds plus a bit of postage for the first one. And then I think the second, the this one was six or seven pounds, something like that. Um, Paul <laughs> Paul tried to order an OKC uh, Oklahoma City Thunder basketball team mask, and he said, "Do you want to?" I was like, "Yeah, of course." Um, I think they're about seven pounds or something, maybe six six pounds something. I was like, "Oh, that's good." I says, um, "Are they from over here?" And he looked, and he was like, "Oh yeah, it's like twenty quid postage or something." He was like, "What?" I was like, yeah, "Yeah, you need to specify on Etsy that you want it from the UK only. Otherwise, you're gonna be." He was like, "But it's in pounds." I was like, "Yes, because we're in the UK. It converts it to pounds, but..." It's not necessarily from the UK. He was like, hmm. Needless to say, no one is hand making masks over here with um, American basketball teams on, unfortunately. Well, not that we could find, anyway. They have got some on the Fanatics website, um, some NBA ones, but they're not, they're not the best, or they're not the nicest looking, so he hasn't ordered one. He's using disposables, but I think I'm gonna order a pack of like the black fabric ones from probably Amazon, I think, because um, Tobin has been told masks aren't compulsory, um, but in the corridor areas, they're recommended. And it's, it's a personal preference. So, you know, if you're in the dining hall and it gets busy, you know, if you're in and out, you might want to wear it in high traffic areas. Because um, Friday and today, it's only the year sevens. So there's probably about between 150 and 200 students, something like that. Tomorrow, when everyone's back, it will be up to capacity, I imagine, or nearly, but it's, it's about 12, 1300 kids. The corridor's going to be busy, so I would like him to wear one. But we'll see. Um, blanket. I got my stitch count right. Hallelujah. Oh man, tell you that row, that did me in. I know there's a row further up. That I did when I made the biggest blanket I've made. And I know that was tricky. I'm, I hope I run out of yarn before I get there. Because it, it wasn't this row that but I found so hard. So now I am on, I don't know, row 63. There's a hundred and hundred and eleven. It always makes me think of Lord of the Rings. One hundred and eleven. It's the 71st birthday. So I'm doing uh, some V-stitches and a lot of single crochet, which is fine. So I'm going to do some of that now and listen to my audiobook, um, inspired by Ange of Yarn and Yarns. Hello. Uh, I've got Borrow Box back on my uh, phone. I had Borrow Box for the kids, um, for them to listen to eBooks during the summer holidays but I, I got them both a book and then neither of them listened to it <laughs> so helpful um but yeah Andrew's saying she uses it a lot and I hadn't actually looked at books for me on there um so I'm now reading one called The Cradle uh The Cradle of All Worlds Maybe that's not too bright there you go by Jeremy Lachlan it's uh, narrated by uh, an Australian lady, and I'm reading it at uh, I don't know if you can see that 1.25 speed. I'm trying to go a bit faster. I think Ange said she listens to it like two times speed. I don't know if I'd keep up. Obviously, I'm not as a faster reader. Um, but yeah, I've got six hours, 38 minutes left, and you get them for about 20 days or something. I think. But, three weeks like you would I suppose at the library. So I've got one um, recommended by Ange, which is Circe. I've got that on my list. And then this one, The Bedlam Stacks, I've read um, by Natasha Pulley. I've read, she did one called uh, The Watchmaker of Filigree Street, which I've read uh, already and I enjoyed it. So I was like, ooh, I'll get another one. But there's lots to, you definitely go down a rabbit hole and I've got a reading list um, 
Ooh, there's a Ken Follett book. I like Ken Follett, but they tend to be quite long books. This one, Talking to Strangers, I got, I bought Paul on Kindle. I thought I'd listen to it um, when it becomes available. I don't know if, I think The Silence of the Girls was recommended by Ange. That's by Pat Barker. That song, that's out at the minute though. Um, Becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, Ange recommended that one. The um, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which is the next, um, or like the fourth Hunger Games book. I read the first three, so I thought, well, maybe. And then um, Children of Blood and Bone, that's one Ange recommended. That's, these are all, I'm waiting for them. There's another um, Christopher Paolini, I think that's how you say it. He wrote the Aragon books. Um, What's it called? The Inheritance Saga. Uh, I read that years ago and I kind of wanted to... Anything like that, I'm like, ooh, more. I really enjoyed the books. Uh, there's a Neil Gaiman one that's not available till December called Chivalry. I listened to uh, a while ago, a, a month ago or so, um, on Audible. Uh, they've done an Audible, an Audible original of The Sandman. Um, by Neil Gaiman and like it was a pretty good cast James McAvoy and oh god Riz Ahmed Michael Sheen Michael Sheen yeah Kat Dennings is really good um, it's only about 10 hours long I, I like a chunky chunky audio book if I can I've listened to uh, Stephen Fry did read the complete works of Sherlock Holmes and it's like 70 odd hours and I loved it absolutely loved it so I've now listened to every Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes story, even the short ones and stuff. Really good. Um, I listened to The Stand on audiobook and that was 49 hours or something, because that is a big old book. Um, it definitely helps having audiobooks sometimes. If it's um, a book you probably wouldn't get to or you, you know, you're time limited, then listening to a book is, is definitely good. You're still getting literature in, aren't you? Not in the, the traditional sense of reading it, but anywho, because I like audiobooks. Because my granny, she used to, she switched to audiobooks when her eyesight failed, because she always read. Her and my granddad were huge readers. They got rid of when uh, they cleared my granddad's house when he went into the home. I think it was about four and a half thousand books, and he'd already got rid of some of granny's when she passed. So. He had his lounge, they called it the long room, it was like 40 foot long, like the whole front of the house or something was the lounge. And it was wall to wall bookcase, you know. Um, it was probably a terrible fire hazard, but, <laughs> but he had books on everything. And we always, I always bought him books for his birthday and Christmas, despite looks I get from my dad, like, don't give him more books. I'm like, he collected books like I like to have wall, so I know, you know. I know the impulse. Uh, yeah, so a charity shop got a heck of a lot of books from Grandad. Um, anyway, I'm going to go because I'm, I'm eating up my crochet time by waffling at you. So uh, I might be back with a little update later, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we'll see how the day goes. So take care and I'll see you in a bit. Bye guys. Hi folks, it's uh, half past four in the afternoon. I just made myself fresh cup of tea, like the millionth of today. Um, work was, well I got, I, I did all, I had, I had there ready for me to do, I did it all and I had to do a training course because for some reason in our, like our work system, it gives you a, a training plan, that, like compulsory training, this has got to be done by, and the date we've got seems to be two weeks after the date that the boss has got, so the boss keeps going, why haven't you done this? I'm like, because it's not due yet. It's like, this needs to be done by the end of the week. And it's sat in my calendar saying it needs to be done by the 30th of September. So I've done my health and safety. Mm. Yeah, health and safety and security training. Done. Um, the boys had a good day at school. Tobin didn't buy any food. Well, he, he bought an apple, but then it's not showing on the school app that he spent any money. So I don't quite know what's gone on there. But he bought an apple for 35 pence, apparently. 
but it's not gone on his thing, I don't know. Um, but he said he was looking at um, how much it would be to have lunch there, because he's got all, you know, the novelty uh, of it. But I sent him with a sandwich and said, well, we'll take that if there's nothing you, you know, in case there's nothing you fancy. Um, but yeah, yeah, his sandwich, he said, because I said, well, didn't you, I thought you'd buy a snack or something. And his friend said, oh, we were too busy. So I don't know what we were doing. But his friends come home with him. It's a friend we had um, come round over the holidays, but they stayed in the garage and outside, not in a you know room close together. But as they're pretty much spending, we've met him twice down the park, and now they're in the same class. They're eating dinner together. They're, they're everywhere together. So I was like, just come in the house. Don't sit in the. Gar I can't make him sit in the garage in his school uniform. Um. So yeah, they're upstairs playing. Uh, Jack had a good day. Uh, first full day with his year four teacher. He got his planner and stuff like that, but he's not bringing it home yet. I, th I don't think. I think they're keeping it in school and then letting it come home over the weekends. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're all too excited. They want a drink, snack, and and to disappear upstairs and play on Minecraft. So it's like they've been at home all day. That's all. So at least they seem for a drink, snack, and arguing over Minecraft. Um, I picked up. The blanket, the blanket, oh, hook stuck in it. So I finished the row with uh, V-stitches and now I'm on the next row, which is row 64. I think if I can eke it out, I'm gonna get to row 65 and then that will be it. Don't know, it's quite, it's, it's a skin, a skinny, skinny ball. So I don't know if I will make it or not. I think it could be okay like that. It's not going to be fully circular, but the mini rings of change isn't fully circular. So it'll have these uh, curves, but I'll either have to speak to uh, the girl who's ordered it if I can't get it sort of rounded out and see what she wants to do. If she wants me to order another ball or whatever. I might see how much another ball is just for one ball, see where I can get one from for the cheapest price and... I might just tack it on, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's it really. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for tea. So the chicken burger or beef burger. I can't decide what I want. We've got some buttermilk chicken burgers and we've got some beef burgers. I know it's burger of some sort because we've got burger buns that came in the shopping yesterday that I want to get used up with a go out of date. That's so my that's exciting. <laughs> um what else? I've got some different nail varnish in the post. I thought I had green coming. It's purple. So this is what I painted my nails with yesterday. I've got purple. So um I know I'd ordered all dark colours, but I got it in my head that I'd ordered green. Nope. Well no, I haven't done anything else really. Um no headache, yay. I always worry about being back on the screens after having the weekend. I always think, ugh. Um, but no, it was okay. So at the minute, it's work's ticking along, which is uh, a little bit suspicious. I'm like, what's, why? What's? <laughs> but I suppose I shouldn't complain. Um, yeah, that's it really. So I'm going to go and drink my tea and see how far I can get. So I may have a finished Wings of Cheese to show you tomorrow. Uh, I'm not going out to the gym because I'm putting the kids to bed. Um, see how I feel, I might go on the exercise bike later or something. I probably won't. I'll probably just sit and crochet. Um, I don't know. I'm sure I'll let you know tomorrow what I get up to. I have straightened my hair today. Um, oh, it's getting dangerous. It's bugging me. I don't think I like the colour of it. I don't know. It just looks a bit... It looks dark down here, and then the, the colour seems dead bright up here. And I saw it when I was out the other day, and I just don't like the look of it. <laughs> I'm laughing at something, so I don't know. It's probably going to go black again. I don't know what to do with it. Anyway, I'm going to uh, not make any rash decisions. Because I'm good at that. I'm just like, that's it, I'm going to cut it all off. And, or dye it all black. So I'm just going to hold on. 
and think about things before I do anything. It's it's really bad. I've got a blue black upstairs, and I keep thinking, I'm just go and do it. No, no, no. You stripped it. You put that horrible, stinky stuff on your hair. It's just that why this is so dark. When I stripped all the colour off it, it should be this colour. I don't know. Anyway, I'm really gonna go. I said I was gonna go, and then I'm not going. But yeah, I straightened it, and it's just it's bugging me. So I should probably just ignore it, shouldn't I? I'm not making decisions while it's winding me up. Yeah, I'm gonna go and see what I'm laughing at. Um, take care, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye, guys.